Hey folks, um, let's get started. So um, what do we have for today? Uh, I guess um, I'm gonna go over a little bit more of the practical stuff um, on Beyond GDP. Uh, okay, we're, we're mostly done, okay? There was just some stuff with regards to how to compute um, welfare from all this data on the Gini coefficient, particularly. Uh, so I, I kind of got to the bottom of that and I'll show you kind of what's up there. Okay, uh, that's first part of the plan. Um, then the next part of the plan, I guess, is, so, and that'll be okay, going over some, the first part I'll be going over uh, sort of some 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 stuff in the notes and, and driving some stuff and then uh and, and also doing this showing how you, showing you how to do it on google sheets um and then the second part um i'm gonna also show you how you can do some of this stuff on um using python okay so uh i think you can do it obviously this is you know learning python is, is a major undertaking but i think you can actually do a lot of the sort of first pass data analysis stuff without having to do like a deep dive and understand everything about it, okay? Um, and part of the reason for that is that it's the, the the ecosystem is getting a little better. You can just, you don't have to install it on your computer and worry about whether everything works and like whether you have all the packages. Um, you can just do like a web-based interface, okay? Um, and those are kind of getting better to the point where you can just sort of jump in and run some stuff real quick and, and get a graph uh, coming out that looks pretty decent. And honestly, it'll look, it'll look better than, than what you can do in Google Sheets. Okay, so uh, this is just to provide an option to you, both for the homework and also just to, to give you a little glimpse of what's possible if, if you go down that road. Okay, so um, I'll try and, you know, I, I sometimes, uh, how should I say this? I mean, you know, if there's something that doesn't make sense, okay, that I've just sort of in your mind oddly omitted, just just let me know, okay? Um, I mean, so, so I'm, I'm going to try and just sort of show you how to do exactly the kind of stuff that we want to do, which is load in sort of this pen world tables data and, and plot some GDP stuff and, and things like that, okay? So, um, but, but you know, let me know if, if things aren't, aren't making sense, okay? Um, I am recording. That's good. So this will be here in perpetuity um, on YouTube. Okay, so uh, yeah. Okay, so then, um, and that's probably all we're gonna be able to cover, uh, basically the, doing the, the, the stuff on Google Sheets and then a little bit of a Python tutorial. Okay, so um, yeah, so let's get started. I added a little bit of an addendum to the homework, not like adding stuff for you guys to do, of course, but just adding that description of, of how to compute stuff related to the Gini coefficient, okay, like I was talking about last time. Okay, so here, just at, if you go to the bottom of the, the sort of um, increasingly lengthy uh, description of what I'm looking for here on mini project number one, okay, the top, which is due. So this is April 6th is, it's next Tuesday, I think. Let me double check if that's right. Yeah, next Tuesday. Okay, so not this coming Tuesday, but the one after that, okay? Uh, and definitely get that country chosen, all right, um, if you haven't already. Okay, so uh, yeah, but in terms of the this Gini coefficient, okay, so remember the, the whole issue here is that in the data <clears throat> we have, we are given the Gini coefficient because that's like the most popular measure of uh, inequality out there, okay, and it's one number that just sort of neatly summarizes the situ the, an inequality situation, okay? Um, but it's not exactly what we want, okay? Because the, the theoretical object we're interested in is actually sigma, which is another representation of inequality, but it's a different one, okay? Uh, but fortunately, we have this handy formula that was derived by the elders or whoever uh, that relates the two, okay? And it makes sense, it's, you know, as basically as, um, the Gini coefficient gets close to its maximum value of one, uh, sigma will get basically infinitely large um, uh, because the sort of the variance of, of uh, wealth gets very large, okay? And then as Gini gets close to its minimal value of zero, 
then sigma, that variance of, of log income will, will go to zero as well. Okay, so Gini goes zero to one, sigma goes zero to infinity, so there's, there, but there is this mapping between them that kind of squishes down sigma in a sense. Okay, so um, yeah, all right, so so that is is good. All right, so we have something that relates Gini, G, the Gini coefficient G, and this uh, variance of log income parameter sigma, okay? Um, although it goes kind of in the wrong direction right now, right? Because we get G from the data and we want to get sigma. Whereas this one sort of is, is, is of the form we have sigma and it gives us G. Okay, so we need to first invert this equation. Okay, so to basically just solve this equation for sigma rather than for G. Okay, so add one, divide by two. You know, have the inverse of that phi function and then move this root two over. Okay, so you can, there's a couple different steps, but at the end of the day, you can solve for sigma equals some function of g which is the direct we want to plug in g and get out of sigma that's our goal all right so um okay and remember you know this phi function is like that sigmoid function it sort of flattens it, it maps from like minus infinity to infinity into like a zero one space so it just, it just like flattens stuff out basically which is what we want to do because the, the genie is, is only between zero and one okay so that's what that that the regular sigma does okay so here when you invert it, right? So you get sigma to the minus one. So that's like the inverse of a function, okay? So instead of flattening things out, it's actually gonna blow them up now, all right? Because it's going in the other direction, okay? Um, you don't need to worry about the, the precise details of that sigma inverse function. It's just a function that we're gonna use, okay? You don't, you don't need to worry about it too much. Um, and in fact, it's a, it's a pretty common function because you know the, the normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution is sort of the classic distribution. I mean, it's the most common one that you see in, in the world and in, in the in theoretical, you know, uh, analyses. Okay, so it's it's common, and the sigma sort of describes the normal distribution. In, in particular, it's the cumulative distribution of the normal distribution. I guess you would call it. Uh, so it's a cumulative function that that tells you where where normally should be things that are located. Um, so it's very commonly used, and hence it's it's included in in any uh, basically spreadsheet program worth its salt, which I guess includes Excel and Google Sheets. Okay, so that by inverse function, it's just called norm in in uh, in Excel and Google Sheets alike. All right, so it's it's just sitting right there. You can you can call it right away. Okay, so um, once we have that, then we're all set. I mean, we just have to type it, you know, implement this particular equation remembering that phi inverse is called norm inv and and that's it okay so uh i have it written here i have exactly basically what you want to write for the mapping okay although but I'll, I'll give you kind of the lowdown of why we're writing this exact thing okay um and there's two basic there's two small complications which is i think it's important to know why these complications arise but they're not difficult to deal with at all all right so uh the first one relates to exactly how G is reported. Okay, so when I've been talking up until now, I've been saying G, Gini is a number between zero and one. And that's still basically true, okay? But usually, you know, people don't, people like percentages, okay? So they, um, if, if there's a zero one metric, right? You can often report it as a percentage. So instead of reporting, oh, the Gini is 0.37, uh, you say the genie is 37%, which those two are equivalent, right? So um, so when you go to the World Bank website, okay, then um, it'll it'll say, okay, uh, you know, it'll have all that in percentage terms, okay? So the first thing to note is that here, suppose G is, is your cell that contains um, the Gini coefficient, all right? And, you know, so G could be, you know, B5, A1, whatever, whatever the cell address is that you use to, there to, to have to, for the particular Gini cell that you're interested in, let that be G, okay? And so then what we're doing first is we have, we divide it by 100 so that it's actually a zero one thing because in the, th in this equation, this thing expects G to be a zero one thing, not a zero to 100 thing, okay? Um, so we divide it and then we just really exactly implement. So we add one. We divide by two of the whole thing. We plug that in norm inv, and then we multiply by square root of two on the front, and that should give us our sigma. Okay, so the, in that cell then will be the, the, the proper value for sigma corresponding to the Gini coefficient that we were given in the data, okay? Um, 
Okay, now there's the so the first complication was the percentage thing. That's easy. You just divide by a hundred. Uh, the second complication is actually um, for norm in uh, is norm in actually wants free inputs. Okay, um, and th there's a good reason for that, which is that um, so so norm in is the is the inverse of the distribution of the cumulative distribution of, of a normal variable. Okay, so um, but in general, you know, a normally distributed variable has a mean and a variance. Okay, so this is saying, give me the inverse at a particular point for a normal distribution with mean, mu, and variance sigma. That's the, the general statement. Okay, this phi actually refers to what's called a standard normal, which is like the, the plainest version of the normal, which is just the mean zero and variance one. So it's sort of standardized. That's what they call it, a standard normal. Okay, so that's why we put in mean zero and variance one as the second and third arguments for this norm function. Okay, with that, everything works. It's all good. All right. Um, actually, well, I tested in Google Sheets. I haven't tested it in Excel, but I these things are, are very common across different programs. So I'm like 99% sure it'll also work. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so then that's what we can do. Um, I, I know I'll show you that in a second, how, how that all sort of plays out. Okay, but that'll be useful if you're, um, well, if you're, if you're uh, doing a country that's not in the, the, the beyond GDP, or if you want to get more granularity on the data. Okay. Um, all right. So, so let me actually. I think it'll be instructive also to to show you the the full pipeline from like where this data come from, where you know how do we get it, and and then you know doing this this sigma calculation. Okay. So. Um, one minute or one second. Okay. All right. So the uh, yeah. So the I, what, what I'm going to do here is let's go to uh, World Bank Gini coefficient. Obviously, I've already searched for this. So it's my history. Um, so if you just I don't know. That's how I do it. I just search Google for World Bank whatever thing I'm looking for. So that. And let me click on it, and I'll show you kind of what's up. So, so the world, first of all, the World Bank is um, it's kind of a bank. It's not it's not like a real bank. It's an international organization that um, kind of provides financing and does developing development research uh, for for different countries around the world. Okay, so you've probably heard of you probably heard of the World Bank um, or or the IMF is the other one, International Monetary Fund, which also does similar but less development related stuff. Okay, but um, they do similar things, okay? Um, but the, so the World Bank is good for international data at the country level, okay? In fact, they're for many things are the best game in town, okay? So and in particular for the Gini coefficient, they, you know, their their job is to kind of aggregate everything. So all you know, various statistical agencies in different countries are computing this stuff, okay? And the World Bank is kind of goes around and asks people, okay, can, can we get this? Can we get this? What years do you have? Make sure that it's all kind of consistently calculated and so on. Okay, um, and then they uh, put it on the one website. Okay, so when you go to the sort of landing page for this, you know, and, and you can search, like if you want to search for other specifically World Bank data, they have a search thing here. I don't know how well it works, but it's there. So um, okay, so for this one, uh, they don't have a graph, but you can see there's um, uh, a table. Okay, which has uh, this and it, it it's not going to have it for every country because this is it's actually still a fairly difficult thing to compute. Um, but it has for a lot of countries, okay. And it's not just big countries. You know, if you look, Bhutan is here; they're not a huge country, um, and so on. And then also, you can see it it doesn't have it every year. So for Belize, we haven't actually gotten it in twenty one years. But good to know that it was fifty three percent, which is actually quite high, um, okay, and so on. All right, so so you can see the latest year. Now this is this just shows you. The latest year uh, that um, we have and the value there, but in fact they have they have a bunch of years, and you can see that these mini graphs here that show you if they do have data, what does it look like in miniature form? Okay, so um, so that's all well and good. We can cruise that, but the other thing you can do is is download it. Okay, so if you if on the up back at the top on the right, there's a little bar here. You can do these online things. I find this to be cumbersome oftentimes. I 
rather just download it myself. Um, so you can uh, download, just click on Excel. Okay, so I, I, I usually just download in Excel. That's um, the easiest way. You can do CSV, which is like a comma separated variable. So that's like a, it's just a text version of the same thing that Excel has, but um, Excel usually, you'll, you'll that works a little better oftentimes. Okay, so um, just click on it, download it wherever. Okay, I actually already have it downloaded and I actually already have it on the website for the course. So I'm not gonna save it and then kind of, yeah, I, I already, I, I'm just gonna skip that step. Okay, so pretend we downloaded it and put it in the, the, the directory where it is right now in the course. Uh, homepage. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> and then from there, all right, um, well, I guess uh, I should, uh, well, it's, yeah, well, I'll just open it here. So let's, let's um, open it in, I'm not using it, so I'm using Libra, Libra Office because it's free software and also I'm using Linux. Where they don't have Excel, so uh, but they're clones of each other. So you can see um, the structure is similar to what we saw for the world uh, for the pen world tables. Okay, um, there's a, a metadata thing which tells you um, what what exactly we're looking at. Okay, in this case, we're only looking at one series. It's pretty simple. We're looking. We know we're looking at the Gini coefficient, whereas the the pen world tables has a whole list of, of different things. Right. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So it has a big description. The, the, it, this is the income Gini coefficient. Okay, so I guess I, I didn't mention probably explicitly before, but you know the the Gini coefficient. Um, it uh, well it um, it can be used on anything, any distribution, right? You could look at the Gini coefficient for I don't know uh, people's height or any, any distribution, uh, over any population, you can, you can look at a Gini coefficient for that to see the level of variance or inequality in it. Right. So in, in the case of income, it has, it, you know, we, we have a concrete notion that it's, it's income inequality and it represents, you know, sort of how income is distributed throughout the society. Okay. Um, and so like, uh, it, which, which is an inherently, well, not inherently, but, but there's a zero sum flavor to it, which is that, Presumably, if there's someone that's richer, there's also going to be someone that's poorer. If you if you're just looking at pure redistribution, okay, like with something like height, it's like well, just because there's a taller person doesn't mean there has to be a shorter person, right? So, um, you know, so th this this has a particular um, interpretation when we think about income or wealth or things like that. Uh, but you can, in principle, it's just it's just a, a statistical description of a distribution, okay? So, but in this case, we're looking at income, right? So. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so that that's the metadata there. Here has the metadata for the country. So that's um, you know we have this uh, Gini coefficient for many different countries, and here's the list. Um, I guess it has also special notes if you really want to see see what's if there's anything to worry about with that that particular country, and then it has uh, which income group is high income, low income, middle income, and so on. All right. So um, <clears throat> oh, and then the region. Okay. So but then it's just like the these three digit codes, which are uh, often kind of obvious. USA is, is pretty obvious, but sometimes they're not super, super obvious. Okay, so, uh, so that's why they have the name here, All right? So um, we got that. And and this is, so this is a panel. This is panel data. When that, what that means is we have two dimensional data. We have the, the country dimension, which usually is gonna be in the columns, okay? And then we have the, the year dimension, what year it's measured in, which is usually going to be in the rows, so although it doesn't have to be. Um, okay. Um, oh, wait. I realize that, that I should actually be showing you this. You weren't missing much, honestly. I haven't even showed, I haven't even opened the data. Uh, how do I do this? I want to look at this file here. Okay. So um, let me. So yeah, I mean the the only thing is I need these these three these are the three digit uh, country code indicators here, okay that you can uh, oftentimes guess at, all right? But then it has the the name here, okay. Um, and then finally, um, I'm in the way. I I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop over here. It's my my spreadsheet zone. Okay, so finally, um, you can look at the actual data, okay, uh, and. Let's see. Yeah. OK, 
Okay. Um, yeah, so you can see uh, this. Let me pull this in a little bit. These are needlessly large. Okay. That's just the country code. We know we're looking at the Gini index. That's pretty obvious. Okay. And then, well, I guess I, I was going to make this. So, okay. So now we see a bunch of empty space. So that's no good. What that means is that we don't have data for a lot of this stuff. Okay. So actually when I said that the country was the column and the, the year was the row that turns out that for this particular one, they did it the exact opposite. Okay. Um, which is fine. Uh, you know, it's, it, it doesn't make a big difference either way. Okay. Um, but you can see, you know, for these, for the whole thing that we can see, there's no data because it's missing in the 16th and 70s for these countries. We can go down, you know, if you look at like Canada, you know, you'd expect them to have pretty good coverage. They actually do get one data point at 1971. Okay. So, um, yeah, I wonder if I can, so you can, uh, How do I do this? Freeze. It didn't work. Anyway, so sometimes you can you can try and make it sticky at the top. Okay, but uh, so here you can see Canada's first uh, one shows up in 1971. So this is like pretty sparse data, right? For most of the time, look, you can see in in the early 60s and 70s, you're missing almost everyone. Okay, but if you go over to the right, in this case, temporarily, let's let's go over to the most recent data. Okay. So now you can see there's a bunch of data. It's still not like perfect. This isn't pen world tables level quality. Okay. But you can see that there's a lot more data in, in the two thousands, basically late nineties and two thousands. And that's going to be true everywhere. Okay. So we don't need to like look at every single data point, but you can see the data coverage gets much better as you get um, closer to the two thousands. And then also sort of not surprisingly, like some countries are really quite good in terms of coverage. Okay. And others are not okay. This country that's good, starting at least in '91, is is Argentina. Okay, so, um, and then you know if you, if you were to look at say Canada, you'd probably expect them to have pretty good coverage. They do not great. I mean, it's every maybe three or four years. Okay, so even for a country like Canada, you're not going to get it every year necessarily. Okay, um, all right. So that's 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 pretty much it. Um, for 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 that. Okay, uh, let's let's jump back into. Uh, this would be the Gini Index website. Okay, so um, now, uh, you know, we want to if we want to work with this data. Okay, um, so it's yeah, you can if you if you want, you can just download that right. Um, find out you know where is your country. Just get that row, copy it, and and paste it in into Google Sheets. Okay, that always works. I actually um, downloaded it for you and put it on the, the website. Okay, and the other thing I did was, um, I can just show it to you. The other thing I did was, uh, so if you look at the, the website down here, this Gini coefficient. So I, the other thing I did was I flattened it. Okay, so when we looked at the day before, it was a matrix, like a spreadsheet matrix, right? So it had, um, you know, it had uh, the, well, in that case, it was the the year on the the columns, and then the country on the row, and then each each matrix element was was the corresponding value. Okay, um, it's a little easier if it's just kind of flattened, especially if you just want to pull out your country. Okay, um, so I just also flattened it. Okay, so if you look at um, this, I'm just going to open it up in LibreOffice again. Um, you can see what I did was let me expand these. I just have it so that each row is a country. And year combination, okay, uh, and then it'll tell you the Gini coefficient there, okay. Um, the other thing you can see is you can you can get a, a quick glance idea of how good the data coverage is for each country. So, so you can see Angola only has three years that are relatively recent. Albania has a few more. UAE only has one year, 2014, and then we saw before Argentina has has very good coverage uh, almost throughout. Okay, so um, if you download this one, you know, let's say you're doing Argentina, just boom. You know, you can just copy. Um, sorry, I keep forgetting to actually show you stuff. Uh, if you're doing our, and this is this is this that that flat file that I showed you where you have the country name, country code, year, and Gini coefficient. So if you're doing Argentina, you can just you know go ahead and, and copy these you know 
20 or so rows here and, and, and move that into Google Sheets. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little easier. Uh, okay. So now um, we, we sort of got the data. Okay. And then the only thing we need to do is go ahead and put it in Google Sheets and, and see what happens. Okay. So let me go back. Where am I going? I want to go here. Okay, so so if we go, um, this is back at the course website. Um, although we actually want to go to Google Sheets. Okay, so let me. Uh, okay, so. All right, so this is this is where I was last time. Okay, what we were, we were looking at last time, um, basically, so we're basing it off the pen world tables. Okay, then we copied out, you know, the the particular rows that we want that we had for the USA with all these different variables shown up there. Okay, um, and then we also uh, created this new table right where we we where we calculated stuff and referenced it based on. Um, the previous sheet, right? So here you can see, like, when we're calculating GDP per capita, you know, we look at US, sheet USA exclamation point S2, which is the correct cell for GDP on the previous sheet, and then divide that by population, which was column G. Okay, so you can, um, it's a little bigger. Uh, it's probably good. Okay, so you can, you can, you can get the appropriate uh, rows, okay? Um, and then here I'm just calculating uh, the log, uh, you know, GDP and, and plotting that too. And then we did all that, that plotting stuff. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's, you know, sort of the baseline that we had before. Okay. And then, you know, if we want to add in things, okay. So, so let's, uh, here we go. So let's add another sheet. Okay. And I'm going to rename it to, um, it's just Genie. Okay. So we want to, um, import this Genie data. Okay. So, Actually, what you can do is uh, it's called just file. You go to file for Google Sheets. You go to file import and uh, go to upload, and then boom! I'm already in the correct directory. Uh, you can't see this actually, so I'm, I'm navigating to the directory, getting that that Genie coefficient data from that I have on the website. Okay, and then I'm pressing OK. All right, so that's uploading it, and here I want to do um, all data. No, I'm going to do insert. New sheet, so I did. Yeah, so we're gonna do this, import data, um, and then it insert, inserts this new sheet. Okay, so actually, this this one, I'm just gonna delete this and uh, rename this one to uh, Genie. Okay, so now that's our Genie data. It's living there, very happily. Okay, um, and I'm gonna rename this. This, uh, so, okay. Um, it's, it's not, it's not happy. Well, that's fine. Okay. So, um, that was supposed to be the pen table table data, but my internet's slow. Okay. So, so this is our genie data. Okay. Um, so now, you know, if I'm doing the USA, okay, then I basically just want to go down and find where USA is. Where you at USA? Um, and go here, let's make it so that we can actually read it. So you can see, I mean, even the US actually doesn't have great Genie data, okay? Um, but let's copy it, okay? Uh, here, okay, so, and then we can just, um, I guess I'll make a, a, a new table here. Uh, a lot of new tables, okay? So we can just make a, a table called like Genie USA, something like that. Okay, so, um, and then copy that in, all right? Uh, and so it's good to, I'm gonna like just clean things up a little bit here. So you can say uh, country, year, Genie. Okay, so it's good to have column names so you know exactly what you're dealing with, okay? Uh, e, all right, so, um, okay, so that, you know, so now we have sort of the Genie data uh, separated off. Okay. So, so from here, you know, we can plot it or whatever. Okay. But I guess I'll, what, the, what I do want to show you is, is how to do this, this transformation. Okay. Um, from 
the Gini coefficient to uh, this sigma thing. Okay, so let's call this sigma. Both okay, so we're gonna do new column sigma. Okay, and then basically just go to um, where's the website? Uh, go to the website. Go to the assignment. Go to the bottom and copy this this line here. Okay, that's that's basically what we're gonna use. Okay, and that's what we're gonna put here. So I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna paste it. Okay, so this this is okay. It disconnected. All right. Um, that's the danger of this web-based stuff. Okay, so here the only thing I need to do is make sure that G is actually pointing to the right thing. In this case, you want it to point into the the cell just to the left, with it, which is C two. Okay, so we did that. Okay, it's going to suggest autofill. Well, I can press Control I don't even have to click on anything. Control Enter. Um, by the way, if, if if it doesn't suggest autofill for some reason, you can you can drag this thing here like this, and it'll do the same operation. Okay, so it replaced the, the same data, but you can just drag the corner and that'll do the same autofill thing. Okay, so now it's saying, okay, it's, it's looking just one cell to the left. It's like smart enough to figure that out and then calculating the sigma according to that formula. Okay, so critically, you know, we have, we divide by 100, add one, divide by two, and then put that in norm inverse, throw in a square two, and that's that's what we have. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's, uh, this is our sigma. Okay, finally. Um, Okay, and so then, uh, that's good that we know it's sigma. Okay, but remember, if you remember, maybe we'll jump back into it in, in, in later on. But uh, when we calculate that welfare, remember when we have those different terms corresponding to consumption, leisure, inequality, and life expectancy. Okay, um, when we calculate that, the thing that actually shows up is not sigma exactly, but it's minus one half sigma squared. Okay, so um, that's gonna, okay, so this is gonna be like our, our uh, let's, I'm gonna call it like welfare inequality term. Okay, so the inequality related welfare term. Okay, and so we can we can calculate that real easy. All we have to do is 0 0.5. So you, for this one, you can, you can do pow, as in power uh, d2. So you're saying take d2, raise it to the two power, which is squaring it, multiply it by 0 0.5. Okay, and then I guess also we need a minus sign. Okay, so this this is what it would look like. I'm gonna autofill. All right, and that's, that's what we get. Okay, so now we actually really get some notion of the, the import of this inequality term. Okay, because up until now it's like, oh, it's Gini, but like, well, how, how important is that? Okay, or, oh, it's, it's uh, sigma. What is sigma? Okay, so but now we actually have something that we can more or less interpret. Okay, because these things here, remember these go into um, these are penalty. In this case, it's a penalty term on the welfare, and you can more or less interpret these as percentages. Okay, so so uh, so it's like minus twenty percent here in seventy four. It goes up to like minus thirty percent as you go on, and you can see that basically. All of the changes happen in this zone when you transition from roughly 20% to roughly say 28%. And then after that, it's just fluctuations, more or less. Okay, so between 1979 and 1997, okay? And well, that's interesting. I mean, so I, I think that's interesting because that actually does line up very well with a lot of the stuff that um, Enrico Moretti is talking about in uh, New Geography of Jobs that we're reading now, right? So um that that was a period of you know very large technological transformation um a period of opening up the trade a period of you know structural change in which we were um transitioning from some type certain types of should it say manufacturing uh into other stuff you know sort of uh higher up the value chain um which would include you know more advanced types of manufacturing uh services and, and sort of creative uh, industries and things like that, you know, your Pixar's that, that, that Enrico likes talking about. Okay. So, um, that's sort of consistent with what, what he's saying too, I think, although he's talking, right. So he's talking about what is the exact nature of that inequality in the sense of it's, it seems to be geographic and, and really it's a cities, uh, different cities. Okay. Um, here we're just saying, okay, there is inequality. He's breaking down a little bit more and saying, okay, well, why is it why is inequality? What are the what are the dimensions along this inequality is is um, occurring? 
okay? Um, or being driven, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, so then, cool, so we have that. Uh, I mean, the, the, so now we, we could uh, go ahead and, and combine all of this, right? So the, it's a little annoying because if you look at, um, look at this growth data here, you know, we have solid, you know, series every year from 1950 until 2019. Okay. So, you know, I could, and I could, you know, we could move these over and make some room for a new column. It, you know, if, if we want to, if we want to put in, uh, another column, say for that, for that Sigma or, or whatever the, the, the welfare penalty for inequality, um, we could do that. We just have to manually copy it and make sure that we're putting in the right year because most of these years are going to be missing. Okay, but um, that's very doable. Okay, so um, and then once you you do that, then you you could plot these against one another. Okay, so you could plot. Okay, what's what's going on with log GDP per capita? Okay, uh, what's going on with inequality? How are these comparing? What's the overall? Okay, so. Um, you can do that, you know, for each uh, component, for consumption, for leisure, for genie, for life expectancy, okay? So, um, you know, so for leisure, you'd pull in from the pen world table side, the hours work stuff, turn that into, instead of hours work, hours of leisure, and then do those same calculations, okay? Um, all right, so so that's, that's sort of the general approach, okay? So I, I think, I mean, um, hopefully you can work, you know, work on the other terms. Okay. Fill, fill in the gaps there, in, uh, in a straightforward manner. Okay. But let me know if you have any trouble. So that's sort of how to, how to approach things in, in Google Sheets land. Okay. Um, so I'm also going to give you a quick tour of how you, you can do it in Python. Okay. So, um, yeah, so on the website, all right, I'm gonna pop over to the website, which should be here. I'll close this. That's what we're gonna look at in a second. Not that yet. Okay, so this is the website um, here. If you uh, head on over, and I'm also gonna move myself back. Maybe better for what we're gonna be doing. Okay, so if you look at um, this here, there's this intro to data analysis, okay, which is a link to, you can see in the bottom, uh, my GitHub. Uh, macro data repository. Okay, so that's going to give you um, a real brief uh, introduction to, to working with macro data in, in Python. Okay, so uh, pretend that I clicked on that and it opened up. Okay, and what you're going to see is this. Okay, so this is that macro data you can see up here, uh, GitHub repo, um, and you can, you can click here. So this has um, all the data all the the code that I'm looking at is in these little I Python notebooks. All right, so this I PyNV that means it's a Python notebook, okay, um, that you can open on your own computer or on on a, an online hosted notebook setting. Okay, so um, <clears throat> you know this is so you can refer to this. Okay, uh, all right, and so but the basic idea is, um, you know, you you can. If, if you're up to it, you can install Python on your computer. If you can do that, then then you're probably all set. Um, okay, uh, the, but the other thing you can do is is just use a hosted uh, web-based uh, version of Python, basically. Um, it's all sort of graphical. You don't have to go on the command line or anything like that. Okay, so um, there are a couple options. Okay, so Google, not surprisingly, has has an option, okay, called Google Colab. All right, it's like co-laboratory. Um, uh, that's pretty good. It's been around for a while, um, and you can just go through your regular Google account. The, you know, the, there's a sort of there's a free tier that you can use, which is going to be perfectly sufficient for anything that we would do. Um, and then if you want to amp it up, then you have to pay. But I don't think we need to worry about that at all. Okay, so that's one option. That's pretty good. Um, there's another one called Kaggle Kernels, which which actually is is pretty good and it has a lot of built-in data sets. Okay. Um, the new one, this is relatively new called Deep Note. Um, I think it's in some sense it's the best, although I, you know it, it's new, so I, I don't want to push it too aggressively. But but it, I think it actually does work and look the best out of out of the three. Okay, um, and so let me just show you Deep Note. Okay, uh, I opened that in a new tab. 
Okay. And so I'm so so I went to deep note, I clicked on sort of just their starter project. Okay. Um <clears throat> and it's gonna jump around a little bit, but basically um it gives you an interface where you can sort of run code, you can upload stuff. So I uploaded the whole Pen World Tables Excel file on here. So you could just do like plus upload from your computer. Okay. And let me it's bigger. So I um you know I just I just do this, I upload from computer and I uploaded the, the Pen World Tables Excel file. Okay, so you can put all your data up on there. I mean as long as it's not huge, which most macro data isn't anyway. So um you can put it on there and then and then you know interface it through through here. Okay. So um and this is kind of this is very similar to what I, I showed you uh, uh before. Okay, so I you know I sort of um in uh I guess it was maybe two weeks ago or so. I'm just going to change the font size. Um, this, this is similar to what I showed you then. Okay, so I guess, um, yeah, I, I guess I get, well, the, I, I'm going to do it on my own computer, but you can you can go through and run all of this basically. And so when you, when you click here, I, you can click on run, but it'll tell you, you can just press control or shift enter. Okay, and it'll run uh, the code. Okay, it takes a second to like boot up. Okay. And then you can just like go through and keep pressing shift enter. Um, okay. And so essentially you're just loading in this. Uh, hmm, interesting. It didn't work. I know why it didn't work. I promise you that you weren't going to have to do anything on the terminal, but I lied. Uh, I need to install one thing. If you actually go down this road on deep note, just let me know and I can I can tell you exactly how to do this. It's it's a stupid thing that you need to to install for it to work. Okay, but then this should actually work now. It's taking a second. You can see it'll even give you the live countdown or count up of how long it's taking. Okay, so that it loaded in the Penworld tables. Penworld tables is actually a little big, so it'll take like 10 seconds to load in. Um, but then from there, uh, you can do this. All right, so. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, anyway, um, and then from here you can you can plot stuff, just like we saw before. Okay, so plotting the GDP data for those different countries and so on. Okay, so um, you can you can definitely do that. All right, so I'm gonna not do it on here. I'm gonna do it on my own computer because it's just a little easier. Okay, uh, but it looks it's the same idea as you have a notebook of cells. Okay, uh, that you can you can run commands in. Okay, so let me. Go over that. Sorry, I'm jumping around here. Okay, so um, this is the same basic idea. Okay, um, we have you know some uh, uh, notebook. Okay, so so what you can do is you know for instance if you're using Deep Note, okay, um, you can uh, you know download this notebook from my GitHub repository and just upload it on to Deep Note and run it directly. Okay. Um, and then it should work perfectly. Okay. So, um, but, uh, so let, let me just, I've been jumping through quickly. Let me actually tell you what's happening. Okay. With each cell and then we can, we can go from there. Okay. So, and basically the idea is you, you need to import libraries. Okay. To say like, okay, I want to do some data analysis or, or I want to plot stuff. Okay. And so there's sort of like, these three NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib are your, your core libraries, okay? So you'll basically run that at, let me restart this, you'll run that at the beginning of every notebook where you do interesting stuff, okay? Um, this is not necessary, this is just so it looks good when I run it um, and you guys can actually see it, okay? Same here as if you have an HD monitor, you can run that, okay? So that stuff is optional, it's just sort of making graphs look a little better, okay? Um, but the basic okay, so the but the basic idea is we want to plot stuff, okay? So, um, and and what we're doing when we plot stuff is we're just plotting numbers, okay? We're just saying okay, we have an, some x numbers, we have some y numbers. I want to see what the plot looks like, okay? So in like the the most basic sense, you know, in Python you can you, know, you can create an uh, array like a list of numbers basically, okay? And so here you can see the list is zero, point one, point two, point three, and there's uh, well, I guess 11 of them. Okay. And then you can do computations on that array. 
Okay, so here I'm doing, okay, def make X just that zero to one list of numbers, okay? Uh, and then make Y X times one minus X. Okay, so that's gonna look like a quadratic function, okay? And so we have these two variables, X and Y, and then we're just plotting what they look like. Okay, so you can see it's not perfectly smooth because we only have 11 points here, but it's gonna give us this quadratic function. Okay, so that's the basic core idea is that you have these sort of lists of numbers arrays okay and you're just you have some for x and some for y and you're plotting them okay so what we're going to do is is less pure mathematical and more like getting stuff from the data okay um and then we're going to plot that stuff okay so um i'm going to do sort of like a really simple data series first and then i'll jump into sort of stuff that we've seen like the pen world tables okay um all right so Okay, so let me let me sh so and and the other thing is that um you know the uh, uh so this you know this is a called a Python notebook or an IPython notebook. Okay, so we're running code here, right? So this is this is code here, and when I you know when I press you can't see me press it, maybe you can hear it a little bit. When I run this, I'm just pressing Shift Enter to run it. Okay, uh, when I run this cell, it executes that code. Okay, um, and I can run it multiple times if I want, but it'll just reassign this variable. But what this is doing is saying, okay, I want to create a new variable, which I'm just going to call GDP. Um, and what I want to do is just read this Excel file, okay, and assign that to this variable. Okay, so the, the cool thing here is that, you know, with, with the spreadsheet, it's nice that you can see the data, that it's, it's just right there and it's not hiding in memory or somewhere, right? So you can see it. Uh, it's, it's, it's in a grid, for instance, okay, and you can see what's going on. If you need m multiple different data sets, you can create, you know, little sheets if you want um, and, and move between those. Okay, so you can, you can you can store a lot of data in a spreadsheet, okay, um, but but at the same time, it, it's sometimes it's hard to, to deal with it all and you end up just sort of moving around a lot and, and you know, the visual metaphor can get overwhelming, okay? So um, with, with with this setup, okay, and you can you can do similar things, but but in a much more succinct kind of way, in a in a more programmatic way, such that like you don't have to remember all the steps that you took. You just have this notebook, and you go through and run every cell, and it'll give you the exact same results every time you run it. Okay, so you don't there's less like of a ability to sort of lose stuff and forget stuff. Okay, so here what this is saying is this is so this is the PD is the pandas library. There's a function called read Excel. Okay, what it'll do is it'll it'll take a file name. Okay, here I I, I happen to have this file, which is just some US GDP data uh, in Excel format, um, <clears throat> and it'll load it in as into 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 this variable. Okay, and then I'm, this is saying that um, the, it's going to order things by the year. Okay, so I run that. Okay, so you didn't nothing shows up. Okay, but but in the background it's assigned that data to this GDP variable. Okay, so let me show you. So now that's like, that variable exists in the background. Okay, so now when I run a cell that just prints out the, the value of that variable, you can see it's basically a table, you know, it's basically a spreadsheet in, inside that uh, variable, you know, has the year, it has rows, right? And each row has a year and a GDP value. Okay, remember this is for the US and we're going, this goes all the way back to 1929. There's an ellipsis where a bunch of stuff happens, more years, and then we see the end of it and goes until 2017. Okay, I did, I haven't updated in like two years. Okay, so, um, and this this data comes from an, another data source called Fred, which is like a more US centric thing. Okay, so so that's what's happening. That's what's hiding in that GDP variable. Okay, but then we can we can do anything. Like we can perform arbitrary calculations on it. So we could say. Look at two times GDP, okay? And then you can see that all of these numbers have doubled, okay? Um, I don't know, that's not a useful calculation because I, why would we, it would be great if we could double GDP, but we didn't, okay? So the other thing you could do though is you can look at like the log of GDP and then boom, you have the log right there, okay? Um, you could look at the log and then take a year-to-year -year difference in the GDP and then boom, you have the growth rate because remember the, the growth rate is the, derivative of the log. And so if you look at year to year changes in logs, that's the growth rate, okay? Um, or, you know, if you, if you multiply it by 100, that's the growth rate in percentages, 
and so on. Okay, so you can see, like, boom, that's the that's the Great Depression, basically, right there, minus 13, 14 percent growth rate. That's the Great Depression. Whereas more recently, we have sort of friendly to one to three uh, percent growth rates. Okay, um, so that's that's the the cool thing is that you can do things really much quicker. I did calculating that in a spreadsheet. Did be like, okay, where where is that column? Okay, put this in autofill. Like, make sure that it's the natural log. And so on. Um, whereas here, you can, if you know how to do it, like you know that that's the log function. Okay, then you can do it relatively quickly. Okay, and I'll I'll show you that. I'm gonna delete this cell because I don't need it. Okay, and, and I'm gonna kind of go back onto the the path that we were on. Okay, so that's how you load stuff, right? You use this read Excel thing to load in an Excel file, and it just puts that whole spreadsheet into a variable. Okay, and then here what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, well, remember that GDP. Uh, it's a spreadsheet. Okay, so what I'm saying is I want I just want that GDP column. Okay, so what I'm gonna say is GDP and then and little brackets and then give it this GDP name. So so it's important that this column actually exists in the spreadsheet. Okay, but it it does because I I look you know it does. Um, and so you you pick up that GDP and then we're just gonna call plot on it. So like dot plot and that's a function. So you give it these little parentheses and you can do this and and then boom it. it plots that okay and and you know just from there you can um okay you can't see it but if you right click for some reason you can see that but you can't see this uh you can right click and do like save image as you can just save that image right right from here from the from the web page um and if you wanted to put that in your report you could do it right so making graphs you know this is like two lines and then boom i've already made a graph okay so it's faster than the spreadsheet it's just requires a little bit of fixed cost in terms of learning how to how to calculate stuff okay um okay so that's growth okay uh you can see you have um from you know different year you go from 1930 it automatically has a sensible year labeling and then we have the the gdp value itself okay so um this is in this is total gdp by the way this isn't per capita so it's it's um it's in millions which means these are trillions, I think. Uh, okay, so these are big numbers. Okay. Uh, so, so as I sort of alluded to before, okay, uh, we can do uh, growth rates. Okay, so and this is basically the same thing I had before. So we take that GDP. And remember GDP, just this GDP part here is a basically a spreadsheet. And now I'm saying I just want that GDP column it, itself. Now this spreadsheet only has really one column. So it's a little silly. But if you thought about like a Penroll table style spreadsheet that has many columns, then it it's you do have to say, okay, I want this particular column. Okay, so this is one. This one is a little sort of redundant and silly, but but we still need to do it. Okay, um, and then the year because I made that the index, the year always gets carried along because it's like the x variable by default. Okay, so this is our GDP number. We we take the log. Okay, and, and NP is is the numerical Python library. Okay, so that's why it's called NP. That log, and we call that on GDP, so this is the log, okay? And then just like I did before, diff looks at the differences from year to year to year, okay? So it's like in 1950, it's looking at the difference between that value in 49 and 50, okay? Let's throw in 100 because I want this to be a percentage. Okay, so this is exactly what I had before. I'm assigning that to a new variable called growth, okay? And then I'm and then I'm plotting growth, so I do growth.plot. Okay, and you can see, you know, just like those numbers we saw before, Great Depression, really bad stuff, recovery, sort of, then the sort of mini mini uh, stall here, World War II, a lot of stuff, and then you sort of get into the normal, uh, you know, uh, style of growth. Okay, so um, that's, I mean, I think it's cool because you can do stuff really quickly and you can you can play around and, and calculate different stuff so, so for instance if I wanted to uh, smooth this out right I could do like this this is a little advanced but I could do a rolling mean with a five-year window okay and now it's all of a sudden it's smoothed out okay so you can you can iterate and stuff really quickly and, and calculate different things and, and it'll look pretty nice when you plot it okay so um, if you're willing to pay the fixed cost I think it's definitely worth it and it's worth it going down the line. I mean, this is, this is these skills are just immensely useful in, in a labor market, in a job market situation. Okay, so um, something to think about.
All right. Um, okay, so how much time do we have? We have eight minutes. Okay, so uh, that's sort of like, okay, we loaded in one series, okay? And that was just, that spreadsheet that I loaded in just had year and GDP, and that it was, it was relatively straightforward, okay? Um, now, we can we can amp it up a little bit, okay? So we you probably wanna load bigger stuff. Okay, so uh, the, the example I have here, uh, is the the Madison project data okay? So I talked about this a little bit a while ago, but I never actually showed it to you. Um, so the Madison project uh, is it's it, it's like Penworld tables, but only for GDP related stuff, and it but it goes back a lot farther. Okay, so you can see a sort of preview. It's going back to like 1880s in some cases. Okay, so this is this is um, this Excel spreadsheet is also on the website, I think. Um, and it has like, this has like GDP estimates by region. Okay, basically kind of, well, not quite continent, but almost continent, okay. Um, <clears throat> and so, but but the, the basic approach is the same. Okay, I'm gonna say, you know, use this read Excel function. Here, I'm just giving it what, what I know to be the file name. Okay, and then also because it has multiple sheets, I need to tell it which sheet to pull out. So it turns out if you look at it in, in Excel, it's, it's called the long data. Okay, so the long is in long form. Okay, um, and then I'm assigning that to MPD zero because it's like the, the first one. Okay, so that took like a nanosecond. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is I'm just creating a new cell and I'm going to print out MPD zero. Okay, so this is this is this mirrors exactly um, what you would see in the Excel if you opened it in Excel. Okay, so you just have a bunch of rows. You have the region name, the year, and then Consumption GDP, real GDP, and population. Okay, so it's just three things, uh, but they're good enough to get GDP per capita, for instance. Okay, or that th this is these are already per capita anyway. Okay, so this is GDP per capita. Okay, um, now there's a bunch there's a bunch missing. These, there's you know thousand rows inside here, but it's basically for Africa you have a bunch of years, for Europe, Western Europe you have a bunch of years, for South America, Latin America you have a bunch of years, and so on. Okay, so that's what's inside that MPD zero is it's a whole spreadsheet basically one sheet of a spreadsheet basically all right now actually i'm gonna not i'm gonna delete that so this is what's called the long form because it has for each row it's basically where okay so the region when the year and the value or values in this case okay so that's long form um wide form is where is what we saw with that world bank stuff where it's like you have where on well usually you have where on the columns and then when on the rows and then each cell it, you know it gives you the value of that thing like gdp in that place for that particular year okay so um we want to convert this okay and what that operation is called oftentimes it's called a pivot okay perhaps you've heard of that but it's a pivot okay so what we say is Take this long form data. We're going to pivot it such that year is in the row dimension. Okay, and it has to be the actual name of this column, year. And then region name, again, that name has to match up, is in the column dimension. And it's going to make a matrix. Okay, and it's actually going to do it for all of these things. And we're just going to pick off that consumption GDP number. Okay, so I'm going to, so, so when we do that, Okay, so that just assigned it to MPD. Okay, but let's actually look at what's inside that variable. And here you can see this is, you know, this is really a panel. This is saying here's the locations. Okay, Africa, East Asia, Eastern Europe, Latin America, so on, and the whole world, and then the different years. Okay, now sometimes you know if you look for 1870, that there is no data for Africa. I mean, obviously Africa had a GDP in 1870. It's just not known um, in this data set. Uh, and then you know, for East Asia, we had a one data point, but then it's kind of missing again. Okay, so um, it's uneven. Okay, but it, there there are some places where it's missing, and that just says NAN. So that means not a number, which is like null ish. Okay, so um, that's sort of you know this is long form here. This is wide form. Wide form is 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 a little better. If we want to plot stuff, usually we want to have it in wide form so everything's lined up, right? Because in long form, it's like things that some you have this year for some, but not for others. In wide form, you at least have a you document it. Okay, for 1872, there's no data for Africa, but there is data for 
Western Europe, for instance. Okay, so you, you kind of know how everything lines up by year. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to say, take this MPD panel, plot it. And when, it, when you plot a panel like this, it plots, it treats every column as its own series and plots them and then gives them labels according to the column name, as you can see here. I'm going to give it some options. Okay, so in, inside these parentheses here, I'm going to give it some options, okay, that are useful. So the first thing is the, the log, log y. Uh, true, that means I, I want to plot it in logarithms, okay? So if, if we plot it raw, then it, it'll look very kind of like a steep growth and it's not going to be clear how to interpret it. But if we do logs, it's basically taking the log and doing that, but it has a better access. So it has access in terms of 10 to 3, which is 1,000, 10 to the 4, which is 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, so on to 100,000. Okay, so no one gets close to 100,000 because no no region has GDP close to 100,000 per person. Only like Luxembourg has stuff like that. And I don't even think they get to 100,000. Okay, so, but so we're going to plot it in logs and we're also going to give it a range of Y values. This is going from 1E3, which is, which is 10 to the 3, which is 1,000, to 1E5, which is 100,000. So that's why we see here 10 to the 3, 10 to the 5. Okay. Um, and then we plot it. Okay, this thing is just, so that the legend is over on the right side so it doesn't obscure the graph itself. Okay, so don't worry about that too much. Um, okay, so you get, well, you already saw it, but um, you get these logarithmic plots, okay, for each region. Okay, so remember the slope of these logarithmic plots can be interpreted as the growth rate. Okay, and so that's roughly constant for a lot of them. But you see, you know, for uh, Eastern Europe, look at, you know, basically the fall of the Soviet Union. So actually, well, this would be the fall of the Soviet Union. So GDP kind of starts teetering and then boom, it tanks. Okay, so a lot of disruption. Okay, um, and so on. And then you can actually see like they've barely returned to those levels. Okay, so there is a question of how comparable are uh, GDP numbers between, uh, you know, full, well, not full on, but like, you know, USSR, uh, communist regime, and whatever came after that it varies. Um, in those countries, but you know, it's not a good picture for them. Okay. So, um, that's one that you can look at, uh, uh, so here's Africa. Okay. So you sort of this sort of decline and then in resurgence starting in 2000. Okay. So you can see the, the broad strokes of sort of history here. Um, unfortunately we don't get that far back for a lot of regions. It only starts in 1950, same as the Penworld tables, but you do, you, you do get more than the Penworld tables when you look at this Western offshoot. So Western offshoots is like US, Canada, Australia, and so on. Okay. Um, and then uh, Western Europe. Okay. And then Latin America. Okay. So you can see what's going on there. Uh, Great Depression showing up across different regions and so on. Okay. So um, that's it. And then the last thing, I guess I'm, yeah, I'm basically out of time. So you can also do the same thing that we did before for the Penworld tables. Okay. So just pull in, read Excel, give it the right sheet name, which in that case is called data, pivot it. Okay, same thing, year, uh, country code in this case, rather than region. And that, that gives you a, a whole panel, okay? And then I just, um, that takes actually a couple seconds, okay? And then you calculate GDP per capita by taking real GDP and dividing by population. Okay, so you just pull out real GDP, pull out population, divide them, the slash here, and then that'll be GDP per, and then you, you look at particular countries. Here I'm looking at that same set of countries that I looked at before. You get this plot. So this is not in logs. This is just regular values, but you can still see, you know, sort of what's happening. Okay. Um, and then you can do other stuff. You can look at, for instance, if you're looking at hours, right, for this leisure stuff. Here I calculated, you know, hours per week. So you, you take hours per year, multiply by seven over 365 approximately. Um, and that'll give you hours per week. And you can see it. I actually took the average over all countries. Okay. So this is a global thing, treating each country equally. Um, I took the mean over axis one, which is the, the columns over countries uh, and plot that. So you can see globally, you know, basically just a steady decline from 42 hours a week down to like 35 almost. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, for, for this uh, Python-based uh, data analysis, okay? Um, let me know if, if, if you wanna go down that road, you know, any questions, be sh you know, definitely ask me, or if you have questions about uh, doing an Excel uh, or the project in general, uh, please, you know, just, just uh, shoot me an email.
or uh, head on down to office hours. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's it. I've gone a little bit over time actually, but um, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. All right. And uh, have a good weekend.